back everybody to a new episode of sal reacts to vid to uh business videos i'm trying to find videos of people talking about their businesses going over things things like that i think i'm going to add this to our patreon and our youtube channel see how you guys um see if you guys like it but welcome in glad to have you guys back in here thank you for all your support we're at 293 subscribers as of this recording so if you guys could help us get to 500 it would really help and as you guys know i own several businesses Cody and I get talk all about real estate, businesses, economy, crypto, inve uh, stocks, commodities, whatever it is, whatever the investment avenue is. But today we're going to go over this gentleman over here. His name is Smitty the Goat. Uh, so definitely give him a subscribe and shout out to his video. I am definitely going to be re reacting to this because it just popped up on my feed and I thought it was kind of interesting. So without further ado, we're going to get this on here and I'm going to kind of switch us in uh, priorities there. I wonder if I could do that. No, that's not going to work. Let's switch that back there. <laughs> All right. As you can tell, I don't edit for crap, but I do kind of want to go over this with you guys. And kind of go over and see. Now, this gentleman here, he started a trucking business, got mentors, got gurus, all that stuff, right? And started getting into trucking. Here's the thing, though. If you're going into an into a industry where you don't know, the best thing you can do, instead of getting a mentor, is in my opinion, go and get a job. Like, if you want to start a moving company, go be a mover. It's probably the best way to learn the basic parts of the job, especially if you already know how to do the back end stuff. But here we go. Oh, good. Like, I'm a smart person. Like, I said, I could do this, right? I'm like, all right, I could do this. I ain't no punk. It's a big boy's game, but I'm going to do it. All right. So I started locking in, locking in for six months. I'm learning everything. All right. Now I'm getting my DOT. Now I'm getting my MC. I'm getting my insurance. I'm getting my license. I'm, uh, I'm looking for trouble. That's actually interesting. To, I'm, I'm glad he went over this first off because that's the most expensive part of moving because you got to get your insurance, especially if you're new to that industry. The insurance company is going to make you pay a huge down payment. Mine was 25000 in 2019. And I think it was 25000 for that. Another three grand to set up the MC number and everything. Uh, and the USDOT number. Uh, what else did I have to do? Um, had to have the gang, the truck was another 25,000, um, and put, putting $20,000 down on a warehouse. So I was like, yeah, I was already out the door about a hundred thousand dollars for setting up the business. So just keep that in mind. That's how much I spent. Not to say that everyone else spent the same, but that's generally how much I spent. My insurance was basically 1200 bucks a month per truck. <clears throat> oh my god i'm going through the whole process man i'm learning i'm learning i'm learning i sat down and learned for six months straight i said i'm not gonna get into this trucking game without learning i'm gonna learn my butt off you can't get in no game without learning all right so i started learning i started learning i got deep into it. i started to understand what it is i'm starting to understand what trucking is dispatching getting loads you know uh, insurance man about drivers how to find drivers uh we start we found the um we found the person that can hire drivers for us and things of that nature Still had a problem with that, but we about to get into it, man. We about to get into it. Uh, this was one of my biggest loss in my life and in my businesses since I started. I will say this. He seems like a young guy. I would say mid to late 20s, maybe early 30s. So especially to someone mid 20s, $275,000 is what he said he's about lost. That is a lot of money for someone at that age for 99% of people. I have to say to you, brother, uh, you you seem to have, have my probably look like you've handled it well. You know, I've last year I've lost two point five million in revenue just on my business on my moving business alone. And as you guys, if you've been following other lives, I've lost quite a bit of money on the furniture store, furniture chain that I bought, and we're down to seven sites now. But I think we stabilized. But you never know; that could be a nice. Uh, three and a half million dollar loss for me but we'll have to see we'll have to see right so let's listen let's listen to this young cat right here started businesses four years ago uh it was an exciting journey of me starting it um 
is the trucking industry a still good industry to be in? Possibly so. Um, is my journey going to be different? Somebody's journey, hundred percent. Also, this wasn't my main business. This was like my second or third business. Uh, was it the hardest thing in the world? Uh, it was a little tough, but can you? Is it doable? Yes. Could it have been sustainable? Maybe. Okay, so we have some good news. As you guys know, I'm watching this for the first time with you guys. So, but it's good that this wasn't his main thing because it's hard to recover when it's your main business that fails or your first business that fails. But it's his like third or fourth business, he's saying. So if you have other avenues of income that are succeeding, but I think the problem was, I'm, this might bet, I haven't watched it, but I think the problem is, is that he um he took on too much and he's not experienced enough to run multiple businesses. Now he may say otherwise as not a diss to him, but the best way to overcome that is you gotta work in corporate America, like mid-level management and above. I mean, and not talking like I was a divisional vice president for uh one of the largest retailers in the country at the time. And this was like 12 years ago and I was over like, well, how, how, I think it was about 3000 stores. I mean, these were small stores, like 1200, 2500 square foot stores. You know, you got store manager, system manager, five to 10 employees, depending on the volume. And then I had 12 district managers on average to one regional and then six regionals under me. So it's a lot of people. That's when you, and that's a lot of individual stores, which I thought of them as individual businesses. When you, if you operate on that level, main doing multiple businesses is something that you can do. But what comes with that level of position is that you know how to interview and find the right talent to help you not be, to help you kind of be everywhere, but not have to be everywhere, if that makes sense. But let's keep watching this guy here. Maybe it wasn't my main business. I recommend anybody get a trucking game and be your main business. But we're about to go through and break this thing down number by number how much money I spent in trucking. All right. I'm going to show y'all on my board exactly how much money I spent on trucking. Y'all is about to be like, oh my. Trucking places that fixes your trucks. Oh my God. They smoke. They took me out the game. Oh man. Chuck sitting, don't start after they sit, just all type of stuff. So we're going to get into the numbers. Um, I'm going to flip it over to my other uh, board. Let's get it. So this is my board right here, y'all. We're going to go over what's going on. So we're going to go over some numbers, right? First truck cost me $50,000 to buy it. I'm all right, let's get it. Let's go. I, I was running it up. I was making money. I was making income, le leverage your credit, things of that nature. Bought my first truck. Let's get it. Paid out in full. I didn't want no note because I didn't want to go into my monthly passive income that I thought I was about to get. All right, my second truck, $45,000, y'all. Another truck. So we, I'm searching for trucks in Atlanta, Chicago, everywhere trying to get the best deal, the market up in the trucking industry. So the trucks amounts are high, right? So uh, I spent $45,000. So now we in $90,000 out the gate. You got to get your insurance to even start trying to start on the road with trucking. So starting up insurance was a big payment of like five to $10,000. So then you got to pay that per month. Whew, we about to get into it, man. Uh, we had to, so they said we had to get trailers. So I'm gonna go drop, bought my first trailer, bought my second trailer. First trailer was 30,000. Second trailer was 20,000. Oh my God, y'all, we down a bag right now. So all of this in my mind, I'm thinking, all right. In my mind, y'all, I'm thinking, listen, I'm about to make $10,000, $20,000 a month. I'm about to make this back easy. As they say, they're like, man, you can make $100,000, $200,000 a year off each truck. Yeah, I thought so too, until that thing didn't happen. So, uh, you know, I, I started, I did start getting some motion. I started learning the low board, which I heard you're not supposed to do now. You're supposed to get dedicated lanes and you're supposed to get all this stuff that you're supposed to get in trucking, which I don't care about no more. I am out. Just let y'all know I'm selling these trucks. Y'all don't even know. I went viral on TikTok. I was getting all my driver socks and drawers. I put a TV in my truck. I put a refrigerator in my truck. I gave my driver a video game. The whole nine yards. I'm, I'm thinking I'm doing good justice. I'm just spending all this money, spending all this money, making sure everything is right to the core. I'm like, man, I want to do this right. Start this business. I really want to make exceed in this business. Whew. So truck start going on the road. I already tell you the first big mistake was he started doing all that overindulgence. 
like I get it. Like he's trying to say, I want to do it in his mind right from the start. That's the biggest thing, especially with any business. You have to watch every single penny. There's always a there's a rule of thumb for successful business owners. They all say this: if you watch the pennies, the nickels will watch themselves. You gotta watch what you're spending everything on. Just like if I see something that I know I could fix, I go and I see how to learn how to do it myself. Or I, if it's something simple like fixing a breaker, I learned that in my first job as a store manager. Breaker went out. I called an electrician, watched him do it, looked up where to get the parts from. So next time breaker went out, instead of 400 bucks, it was like 40 bucks. So that, that's, how, that's how you have to think. I don't think he was thinking like that. I think he was thinking of if I make them comfortable, they'll be happy. Look, I can only tell you the, one th the only thing that makes truckers happy is good rates. That's it. They don't care about anything else. The, they'll, they shower at truck stops. They'll be fine. They, they eat shitty food all day. They really don't care about that. What they care about is getting paid well. That's all. <clears throat> but I think his big – that's looking like that was a pretty big mistake from the start. And to be honest, I think he got fleeced on the insurance. $10,000 a month is a lot. Um, I Like I said, I pay about $1,200 per, tw per truck. But you got to remember, I am a Gen Xer. I'm – probably got about 20 years on this guy so that is also leveraged into my insurance and i also have real estate backing up my businesses so i have roughly about 20 million dollars worth of real estate that's that's generating income just in case there's uh pitfalls in any business that i get into but you know let's keep listening on sounds like he's a smart gent and he's gonna learn from this mistake a little bit oh man okay so hiring drivers now i'm hiring drivers guess what uh one driver leave my truck on the road on the side i'm like oh my god what is going on my truck is in a different state i don't know who to tell to go get the thing or to go find it where it's set and i found the truck the tow person charged me seven thousand dollars to go 10 minutes away blew my mind stuff like that start happening i'm like oh heck, boy what <laughs> All right, so as this is going on, you got to pay insurance. So in a two-year span, let's put it back on my number thing. In a two-year span, I'll be running my uh, running my business and having insurance. Guess what? I had to pay around about $80,000 in insurance to Progressive. This is the only company that it took me in to be able to do my insurance, y'all. I'll say this. Progressive is pretty much the only person on there. But man, 80K for two years, I think mine is, comes out to like, it's 1K per truck. Come on, I got 20 trucks. It's it's about 12, it's like $11,044. Let's say 11, 000, uh, sorry, $1,145. It's like 1144 and some change per truck. But let's just say times 1145. So... You know, my two tr two of my trucks is half of what he spent. So I think he had a bad agent. I think that's what happened. I think he had a bad agent. And if, if I were to take a look at his policy, like I did my first time getting an insurance policy for any for my very first business way back in the day, I got fleeced on the insurance because they added on a bunch of stuff that I had no idea. And what they do is they get you on the phone saying they'll say a whole bunch of stuff that you're just thinking is just part of what you're getting, but it's not. And they're getting you to say, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That sounds good. So they have like a kind of affirmed. Yes. So I learned my lesson. I, I say, let me see the policy before I sign off on it. And when I get the policy, I'm like, okay, if it's good, I'll take, I'll sign off on it. That's what I think he should have done. That would have avoided probably the 80K and it would have saved him 40K. The only place that took me in to do my insurance, right? So I got the insurance, man, uh, with them. I was just paying him $4,000, $5,000 a month. It's killing me, killing me. So I got my truck rolling a little bit. So I was making a few runs here and there, but uh, the numbers wasn't adding up. I was making $5,000, but expenses was like $9,000. It was bad, y'all. It was bad. All right, so as I'm starting to get my loads in, uh, I'm teaching my sister and my mom how to dispatch, 
Yo, I put my mom in training, my sister in training. I'm like, man, this is gonna be Smitty Trucking business, gonna be big. Put my mom in trucking, uh, this dispatching learning, my sister in dispatching learning. I'm like, all right, y'all, y'all be the dispatcher, y'all gonna make y'all money. I'm gonna be the owner, we're gonna make the money. I'm gonna hire us a driver. We got the driver recruiter, we got the business on point, we got the low boy, we're gonna get the load off the low boy, we're gonna be lit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Back to the board, we uh, insurance kicked our butt, another 80,000. Uh, then we got to uh, go into the situations where our trucks need to get fixed. So, uh, as much as I spent on these trucks, as much as I invested in these trucks to get fixed and clean and make sure they was good, I ran into the problem where stuff was going wrong. So now we're on the road, we're going state to state, we're going to the road and stuff like that. Our numbers is not really good. So then, what's happening is our trucks are breaking down and need to be fixed. But this is where it really, really killed me, y'all. This is where it really, really. Okay. I think this is also where I think I know where he's going on this. Um, I made this mistake. Look, I made this mistake working for a company when I when I was uh, I was the inventory logistics uh, vice president for a company for like a year and a half because I absolutely could not stand working for that company. But anyway, I managed like it was a total of like three billion dollars worth of inventory in and out. Right, was what I was. I was the head of and truck fixes are ridiculous. But if you do the preventative maintenance, which is usually about mid 600s, maybe high 700s on a regular basis, they'll probably, you'll probably catch the small problems that cause the big problems down the road. So like I would catch things, I'd be like, oh, it's a $200 fix, $300 fix here. And my my trucks would never have a problem. When others would not do the preventative maintenance, they just says it's a waste of time. They would run the trucks until there, there was a problem. And one of the problems is piping gets broken down. You got runaway truck syndrome where the, for some reason the gas is, the fuel just keeps being pumped into it fuel pumps damage you got idiots who don't fill up who don't let who let the uh, fuel line go below a quarter tank all that fun stuff so i see where a lot of his fixes and his fixes were coming because he kind of got caught in this part where he had to run the trucks basically 24 7 to catch up on the deficit of the revenue he was creating which caused bigger maintenance problems and since he was inexperienced in trucking he did not follow proper preventative maintenance schedule but if you follow the schedule then you're only doing small minor repairs and there's some things you can do yourself like you got to fix the mirror that's pretty easy uh open up the cab you got a the the um the heat protector broken well, that's an easy fix go to the Truck stop, 22 bucks, get the little, it's a little tube, you unconnect the tube, put the heat insulator tube on and then reconnect it, you know, things like that. You learn how to do stuff yourself. I think that's where he made that. I think that's what probably his biggest mistake, but let's hear what he has to say. By the way, this is not dissing him, but it's just let him, let's see what he has to say. He really, really killed me. The trucking places that was trying to fix my trucks was scamming me so bad and there was nothing I could do. By the way, I want to say this right off the bat, right off the bat. Don't ever, as if you're new to the industry, don't ever take your truck to like a third party mechanic. They're going to, they're going to cheat you out of money. Take it to a dealership because if they try to cheat you, you make a complaint to the to anybody, that dealership will lose their dealership license from International Freightliner, uh, Mack Truck, or Peterbilt, or wherever. They don't want to do that. They want to take care of their customers because they know if I take care of you on the service side, you're going to keep buying another truck from me. That's why I always say it dealerships a little more expensive normally, but you won't have to worry about scamming like this. So if you went to the dealership, it probably would have been a different deal, but let's see. Literally y'all, it was nothing I could do. I knew that they were scamming me and getting down on me and I couldn't do nothing about it. It was so crazy that I'm in this game. I don't know how these trucking people deal with this 
and, and think that this is okay. This shit is not okay, y'all. I'm in these places getting my truck fixed, and they like they just throwing these numbers on the wall. Like they don't even they just like yeah, seven thousand for this, three thousand for this, four thousand for this. I'm like, all right, cool. I come back. Oh yeah, we had to fix these two things too. That was another five thousand. So your bill is twelve thousand dollars. I'm like, bro, what you mean my bill twelve thousand dollars? Show me what y'all did. Oh yeah, we did this. Now I'm clueless. I'm just saying things. I'm clueless. They're like, yeah, we fixed this. We fixed this. We had to get a new part for that. If you want this to work, you don't want this to work. We don't fix it. We don't. We don't fix it. I'm like, bro, yeah, I want it to work, bro. I gotta get my truck, but I don't want it to break down. You want your truck to break down? No, I don't want my truck to break down. Okay. I see what the problem is. He got caught up. This is a typical tactic. It, it's used in car sales a lot, in car uh, service centers a lot too. Um, not so much luxury brands, but you know, a lot of mechanic shops and stuff like that. Especially if they see that you don't know anything, and they'll know right away that you don't know anything. Like I, like I remember my first time bringing my own truck to the dealer to the shop, right? And if something was wrong with the coolant, I knew something was wrong with the coolant. I specifically told the guy, hey, I'm dropping this truck off. There's something wrong with the coolant. The fan's kind of operating at half the speed. <clears throat> so he said, okay, I'm going to check. The mechanic comes out. They always do this saying, this is why, you need, and this is going to be like an extra. Five. I was like, what does the spark plug have to do with the damn coolant system? Like, it, it starts up fine. It runs fine. It won't drive because the sensor is saying it's the coolant's not working when the coolant is working because the engine's running cold. And they're like, oh, it's obviously the sensor. Tell me how much it is and then put it in there. And when you kind of talk like that, they're like, okay, this, this guy ain't going to play. He, he know he, he can tell when we're lying. Not to mention, I could you can always tell when someone's purposely making direct eye contact with you while trying to pitch a sale to you it usually means they're trying to push a higher price on you they're trying to get over on you so when someone's always like if someone's like real timid and it's going to be a high price that means yeah you need a lot of work and i don't know if you want to prepare for this so they don't know how to handle it that's usually what happened but i think with him because he's so young looking and he and he speaks with younger colloquialisms that they said, OK, this guy does not know. Uh, to be frank, uh, it's not just to this guy. The mechanics and everybody that he was getting drunk with probably looked at this guy and said, he's an effing idiot. We're, we're going to make bank on this. But he also looked like he bought used trucks, which had a lot of pre-existing issues as well, which is why a lease sometimes is better. You get a brand new truck, tell them how many miles you anticipate running. And then just give it back or buy the truck yourself. <clears throat> That's probably the best thing I can recommend. Now, oh yeah, we got to fix this too, fix this too. Bills coming out to 10,000, 12,000, 5,000, 7,000. I'm all right, I'm paying it. I said, man, uh, I'm in this business. I got to get it fixed. I'm just going to pay it. I'm paying it. Another situation coming around. This, this one really took me out. I have my, char my truck part. <laughs> <clears throat> where they was charging me, charging me, charging me a, a week and a month. Okay. So. Oh, also keep in mind, the longer you keep those trucks on the lot, they'll charge you a lot fee. Just keep that in mind. I think that's also where a lot of the fees added up. But you got you got to remember, you're doing business to business transactions. They're going to gouge you. They're going to try and gouge you. And you got, it's, it, I hate to say it. It's like a, it's like, I'm going to get you first before you get me kind of, world that's how business really is i think this is what's waking him up to it so somehow my truck got towed off the lot two minutes away i come to the lot i told my driver my truck is at this lot my new driver since the old one get kicked out my truck is in this lot go get this truck you know go start it up go get it what you know let's get in it all your stuff is ready we're about to get on the road in two days he get there he says man there's no no smitty, smitty wealth trucking here I'm like, what? I've been paying every month. They say, oh, your car declined one time. We we uh, we uh had told you, we tried to call you, it didn't work, so we told it. They told it two minutes away. I get to the tow place. He said, yeah, yeah, they told it. It's been, they said, I, I had, I thought it was been there for a couple of weeks, but they said it'd been there for like 60 days. So I, I parked my truck thinking that it was paid at the trucking parking spot for 60 days. They telling me that it's been there for like a month. 
45 days. Oh my God. Now they're charging me by the day. Now they're charging me per unit by the day too. So the truck and the trailer is getting charged like $150 a day. So then they said, you got a, a 30 day fee on top of that, that got charged because you left it in our yard for 30 days. And they said, man, you almost on the verge of us taking a truck and you not even being to get it back. So I'm like, all right. So they slapped the bill on me. $12,000 to be able to get your truck out. I said to take my trucks three minutes away and it's been sitting there every day. Bro, $100 a day, okay, cool, $3,000, $2,000. I would even pay that. They came out with this sheet of all this stuff. Also, it sounds like they're gouging the shit out of him, but I'm telling you, they're gouging the shit out of him because, let me tell you something, they don't like black men in these businesses. I'm telling. I'm just being straight up with you guys. They do not like black men in these businesses. Why? There is a lot of money in trucking, and if you manage the business right, you can make a lot of money. My logistics side of my moving and logistics company does about six million dollars a year, and we're running contracted work. We're not doing loads like he was doing. It's just strictly contracts that we get for our final mile delivery service. <clears throat> This is absolutely absurd that they would do. It's like I'm I would be screwed. I it's like you go ahead and do what you gotta do, but I'm gonna sue the shit out of you. That's what I would have said. That's what I would have said from the gate. I would have come with an old with an attorney. And this is why I always say in these type of businesses, you have to have a, a business attorney on retainer. I keep mine on retainer about forty thousand dollars, which I think is good because they handle employee complaints, lawsuits, because you, you get sued like crazy. You're not doing business right unless if you're getting sued like crazy. Cause And trust me, it's frivolous freaking lawsuits. Like I had one guy say we didn't pay him $3,000 in commission. Went to the judge, judge said, well, how much is commission? 3%. What was the sales? Well, the sales for the last six months was 21000 And they were like, okay, so he how would he get three uh, $3,000 owed to him? You'd have to sell a hundred thousand dollars, and they're like, and the judge said, okay, case dismissed. And unfortunately, you need a lawyer to go do that because when you have a business, no judge will take the case until both sides have appropriate legal representation. You can't represent yourself as a business. You can't do that. But I, he's been, he's I already tell he's getting a run through man. They're working him like a millstone. God damn! I literally was getting into a fight with the guy. Because, like, literally taking my shirt off and fight him because it's like, bro, you can't tell me that you told my stuff two minutes away that the first group of charges was four or five thousand dollars for towing for two minutes away. Like, yeah, you got two pieces of equipment over this certain amount of pounds. We're charging this amount, and uh, uh, I said, I'm not paying that. You're not getting your truck. I said, I'm not paying that. You're not getting your truck. And every day you keep it in here, you're going to keep charging more. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, bro, these numbers is right now. I need the cars on my own, y'all. Y'all can't charge me for this. Yes, we can. It's our rules. Also, if you run into a situation like this guy, contact the FMSCA and the D and the USDOT board. If they lose their license because they're priced, because it, we are not allowed to price gouge. Anybody who has a DOT or is part of the – federal transportation board you're not allowed to price gouge this is price gouging him because he needs his truck to do business and they're price gouging him and it's probably because they're behind on their bills that's probably what it is twelve thousand dollars not getting your truck out until you do so now i'm sitting at home i'm like bro what am i gonna do i can't leave it in here steady accumulating money guess what i do my dumb self i goes and pay it so i'm conversating with somebody like oh my god bro i need help in the trucking industry this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to partner with somebody else. I'm going to take my truck to somebody else. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let them run my truck. All right. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to let somebody else run it. I'm going to put it on their fleet. I heard somebody got like 10 trucks. They're doing good. I'm like, bro, just take my trucks, put it on your fleet, and let you run it with your well or machine already. Let them run it. He said, yeah, get it fixed, bro. 10,000, 20, that we're going to get on the road like my other trucks. They're doing $10,000 a month. I, I don't know why I listen to that. <laughs> get this truck fixed. Uh, ten to a, ten twelve thousand dollars. We like, all right, we gonna get you over ten twelve thousand dollars back in the next sixty days. Baze 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 baze. Weeks go by. I pass in the truck. Guess what, y'all? I didn't start making no money. <sighs> Man, truck not getting on the road. 
truck get on the road breaking down, can't make no money, uh, truck sitting, truck got to get fixed. Uh, I'm not paying the bill no more. I'm out. My, I'm, I'm mentally, I'm out of it. He like, I pay the bill. I uh, can't get it back on the road. Death system going crazy. Uh, he don't make no money. Still down twelve thousand. Didn't get that back. Um, take my trucks to different states and stuff like that. With oh, this driver left your truck. Y'all, when I tell y'all, this was the most craziest experience and level of losing, just seeing my money go down a drain I ever seen in my life, y'all. Oh my god, buddy, just wait until you start losing millions off a bad decision. That's all I gotta say. But also, he should not have the rule number one is don't listen to someone else, especially. So I pre probably. I'm I'm figuring he went to someone who's a fast talker saying, yeah, I'll get your money back, all this stuff. Whenever someone says, I'll get you your money back, I'm not investing. I'm not doing jack shit with that because every time I've heard, I'm not, I'll get you your money back, I never get my money back. So what I do is if it's, if the amount exceeds my, my limit of comfortability, then I don't invest. But with him, he's like, he should have just sold the trucks and moved on with his life and cut the losses there after the tow yard incident. That that's all I could say. Or but he should have called called the authority, called the sheriff, called the authorities and say cuz they have to they have to have displayed rates. And they can't just arbitrarily tell you it's just $12,000. That that is outrageous for that. But it looks like we're coming up towards the end of this video, so let's just keep going towards the end and see how it goes. I literally lost close to $300,000. Seriously, y'all, I'm so serious. I lost almost $275,000 in this trucking industry. And now I'm chucking up the L, man. Um, I found that like if I would have kept letting it roll out, you know what I mean? And kept trying to make it work. What I kept doing was, I'm gonna make it work, but I'm a strong, I'm a hustler, but I got this, I'm gonna keep making it work. But I kept digging myself in a bigger hole and a bigger hole and a bigger hole and a bigger hole and a bigger hole. That's another good point. Like he kept saying, I'm gonna get myself out of it, get myself out of it. We all entrepreneurs fall into that situation when you start going downhill too fast, you're like, I'm gonna get myself out of it. I can, I can, I can, I can do this, I can do this. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you just gotta cut the turd loose and move on because it sounds like you were trying to find a cash cow and instead you got a dog with fleas and it's, it's just time to put down the dog. You know, it's like, unfortunately it's like, you gotta just let this one go. You know, it's, it's time to like the, you know, this, it's a dog with fleas. It's very sick. It's very ill. You know, it's time to just let it go off to greener pastures. But, <clears throat> I understand you probably want to get all that money back, which is true, but sometimes you just got to mark it off as a loss. Hurt my soul, man, so I just had to cut it. I said, stop running my trucks. Don't run my trucks no more. I don't want no drivers. I don't want to get in a bigger hole, nothing. Just stop. So one of my trucks right now to this day is in Florida. Put so much money into it um, inside and out. Uh, my other truck is sitting in Atlanta. They've been sitting for six months, seven months, not making a dollar off of them. Money down, insurance, the LLC getting dissolved. Like, bruh, lesson learned, man. You know, I got into the business with all the shiny object syndrome. Everybody was doing trucking, get in trucking, get in trucking. I'm trying to do the right thing, trying to invest my money. I'm like, all right, I'm making money, but I got to invest my money so I can make more money. So I'm trying. Okay. Well, let, first off, let me let me get a different face business. for him. There we go. <laughs> I, I want to do a brother like that and <laughs> have him on that on that face there. But I do want to say this is this is kind of the thing with fast money. The the expectation of fast money. You're trying to flip, do this, 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 this, this. Like your your head's basically on a swivel, just swiveling around. You're not. A, you're kind of like a jack of all trades, but a master of none. What you should have done is just taken that money, reinvested into the one business that you were really competent at and really can grow. It sounds like you're trying to do this business. You're trying to do this business. You're trying to do this. And you're trying to get to that Miami lifestyle. Brother, that is my advice to him. Brother, Smitty, I love the name anyway. Hope your channel does really well too. But let me tell you something. I have... Been in corporate America for 
like 18 years. I have ran my own business for six years. In that six years, I made sure I was really competent at my first business. And then when that first business really took off, I kind of went into a complimentary business, warehousing and final mile delivery. And then we kind of went into logistics. So it was all still really one company, but it's got different divisions. Then about f- two years ago, so four years into running the business, I o- I started buying rental properties and started building my rentals and everything, right? Now we're in going into year seven and I'm healthy, but I haven't done anything that's really outside other than like, like I said, still kind of in the box. I have a furniture store company. The only thing that's kind of outside, but I'm not really part of that is a construction company. That's really outside. But I mean, that was a recent investment after I built up everything. I wasn't expecting to do it. I was kind of wasn't even thinking about getting into construction, but someone I had worked with in logistics left logistics and was starting his own construction company. So I said, yeah, let's let me help you out. I only want 33 percent. And man, the dividends on that has been paying phenomenally. But I want to say to you guys, like, you know, the reason why he got stuck in this situation is because he made he obviously is making good money somewhere. But the problem is, is that he's trying to do more faster. That's not whatever these gurus are telling you is the exact opposite of what has made me and everyone I have met millions and how the people I had worked for made their billions. They did not make it fast. They made it slow, consistent, arduous gains. And then when they were ready, they started investing in other businesses. The best thing he could have done was if he had taken that money and put it into the stock market at the beginning of 2023, he would have doubled that money by, by now. If he had just invested in the tech sec in a tech uh, tech sector uh, spider ETF or whatever, you know, he would have made more money doing that than trying to start a trucking business. Now I get it. You see Swift. You see a lot of these big covenant, big trucking companies. They're making money left o- like hand over fist, right? But you got to remember these guys have been in business for hundreds of- since trucking was an industry. They're the kings of industry. Now, you're not going to make a lot of money, as much money as them, but you got to be in it. And that's the thing. That's the biggest mistake I think he made. He just wasn't physically in it. Like, he wasn't driving the truck. Because when you start doing the routes, driving the truck, you got your CDL, you now know the expenses and the true cost of working for that. So now you can say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not paying you this. I think he was probably overpaying his drivers, too. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to overpay, but if you overpay on drivers, you got to deliver on exemplary service. This is another thing I learned, too, is just focus on what's working. Like, don't go away from what's working. Focus on one thing that's working for you that you gain traction with. See, exactly. Just what I was talking about. I I haven't even seen this. Just what I was talking about. You got to stay on point with it. Just stay on point with what you're doing well in. And when that makes money, then go do something else. They locked in on that because, man, if you if you try to branch off to these new things, you know, it's like you're trying to put 20% here, 20% here, 20%, 20% here. You can't give it all 100%. So what I've learned to do now is just like, man, focus on what's working. If I made $100,000 in something, why am I coming over here and trying to make $100,000 in this? And I've never done it before. New business, new model. No, double, triple down on what made you the $100,000 the first time. So that's what I did. I'm sticking to my consulting business, my digital marketing business, and my funding company and my credit business. I'm not doing trucking no more. Don't they trying to convince me, man, you need to do it this way and that way. Guess what? Smitty the goat is out. <laughs> don't ask me about trucking. I don't want to care about trucking. I'm selling two trucks. I'm letting them go for a deal with all trailer, two trailers and two trucks. Give me a nice deal. You can have all this stuff. DM me, email me, whatever you got to do. Because I'm out. I lost two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in trucking, y'all. So this is my story, and I hope this, uh, you know, opens some eyes to somebody. But I'm not saying don't get into trucking. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't get into trucking. I'm saying, hey, be precautious. Learn, you know, 
make this be your main priority business, I would say uh, get you multiple mentors, even or you know, I, even further than that. Don't expect to make a lot of money in this game. As soon as you get in the game, it takes time to build your stuff up. Um, make sure you're going about it the right way. Work under somebody that's at a high. Okay, so we're kind of at the end of this video here. But he says all the same things. Like, But you don't have to get a mentor to do it. Your mentor is normally going to be a person you have worked for for five years, a decade. Like I said, don't try to sit here and try to be this big boss at 25. Go work for someone else, get a good career, get some money under your belt, get some, get a good amount of wealth. I'm talking about $2 million net worth before you go start ventures like this. That way, if you lose, it's eh. But, you know, luckily for this gentleman, for, for this YouTuber, he has other businesses. So hopefully that works out for him. But like I said, everyone thought trucking was this amazing business. I think it was because of that <coughs> trucking guru that's um, being alleged a fraud saying that she made like hundreds of millions of dollars in trucking not to say you can make hundreds of millions of dollars in trucking but you gotta remember the guys that do have been in trucking for 20 30 years even but even still an owner operator i've seen quite a few that have made enough money to pay off their mortgage uh, secure their retirement get vacation homes get the things they want but with that said, guys, what do you think of the video? Thank you guys for joining in. Glad to have you guys in here. Like and subscribe. Follow me on, on TikTok as well. Trying to grow that back up to what it was. As you guys know, I started on TikTok first. But uh, come back in here. Glad to have you in here. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.